right. Good morning, guys. Welcome to ANU Pre Market Analysis. It's Friday, Friday the 20th of October. And uh, feeling good, feeling great, tired, but who cares? Who cares? Nobody cares. So we gotta do it anyway. And let's dive straight into the chart. So yesterday we broke above the highs and we continued our bullish structure. There were some moves on EU as well as on GU. Let's see, let's see. So we have now pretty day highs up here. Oops. We have previous daily lows down there. And GU is still bearish. EU is bullish now. So that's a bit of a conflict there. Um, and what I'm gonna do right away is look at the XY. And the XY is gonna tell me whether we're bearish or bullish. The XY is bearish, meaning I will not follow GU right now. And I will actually I will follow both, but there might be a conflict with GU and the XY. Um, although this break is not that it's not very big. It's not a strong break. Hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. This is a nice area trade from first of all. We got internal AS liquidity. We got the bearish break there. Oops. And this is not a price range. I don't need to mark it. I will just create my huh? This price range we're working with, the previous daily low, previous daily high is not really interesting for DXY. I don't use that on DXY because DXY is the result of several um, financial instruments. So yeah, what I'm looking at for DXY is price to come up here and then put the short following that structure. Um, if you zoom out on the daily, um, let's start on the daily. What can we see? DXY. So we open there, close there, but you left like a wick. It's like a wick break on the daily. So it's not really strong break on the daily. Um, we tapped into that new weekly open gap. We still had this push to the upside. Then that was on Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. We're still inside that candle. We didn't push to the upside yet. We didn't push to the downside yet. All those structures bearish. It seems to be, well, it is very correctional, indicating that we might get a push from here to the upside or today uh, coming into, our, into next week. We get that further, suddenly that momentum that will step in and then give us a move to the downside. Whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. I think it's correctional because I said on the high time frame, I'm still looking at this high to be taken out. So I alert there and for price to tap ideally into this high time frame for value gap, whether it's going to happen or not. I'm at least looking at this high to be taken out. Um, now, the thing, of course, I don't know is if we're first going back into discount pricing of this entire leg here. Because this is not a very strong leg either. It's quite correctional. If you look, this is impulsive, it's quite correctional. But it's a strong, it's a, it's a bullish break nonetheless. It's not a minor break. Look how far we come above ready. Um, now on EU, oh, it's alarming. What is this? On EU, we know that we overhaul at this area that we're targeting to get into that 
discount pricing of that bullish leg. So let's see. Those are the strength line building up here. And uh, that will be ideal. And then come above here, get into that discount area or premium area to continue further down based on the blue structure. But yeah, that's all depending on that's all high time frame and that will you'll like see that over time. Whether that's gonna happen or not. Um for now, if you look at the four hour. We have our light blue structure that I turned bullish. Um, it took some time here to break bullish, then got a strong impulse to the downside, and now it's quite directional to the upside again, which is pointing out that it might want to turn bearish. And I don't know, it still ties behavior, it's not like the actual structure. So, uh -huh. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so that's why I'm for now focusing on most recent structure, which is a low, a high, a higher low, and a potential higher high. I think that we, I'm sure, we actually already reached back into this kind of pricing. So we can already mark that out. It's a valid high. Probably didn't. So that's good. But then we zoom in, what do we have here? We have Asia highs, or uh, Asia, Asia lows. We got Asia highs. Then we have a high, low, lower high, lower low. Uh, we might get a short go up here. Let me just use this. So as you've seen over the past few days, getting more zoned into the charts, more focused, more more in sync with the charts. And as I'm getting more in sync with the charts, I'm starting to slowly move to lower time frames, slowly move to more intricate structures, as you can see here as well. Bullish break, bearish break, discount price, premium pricing. So we might get the move. From up here, so what I will be doing is try to get a short from here from that. Ideally, that block there, that order block. But I recognize for myself that I started with high time for structures. With the one hour and actually first of all i started off with this blue one where i couldn't find any entries okay <laughs> no wonder because it was way too large it's not too large but for a scalper that wants to trade every london session you have to get more intricate and it takes time to get zoned in yeah you see with the markets, but now I feel like I'm slowly getting there again. And get a nice 50 minute demand here. This will be a 50 minute supply. With that, with that 50 minute block there. Now we gotta keep in mind that we have previous daily highs above, but that's that's no biggie. As we have Asia high and we have another high, so all we want to see now really is price to move up, price to give an inducement, price to continue up, and price to give some entry. That's what we're looking for. Now, lining that up with DXY, what does DXY look like? Also that break there, although it's just a little bit, let me go to the five minutes. So you can see how this one took that liquidity, came above here steps into this block then we push down then we get that bullish break return to discount pricing and we slowly continue up uh, we might as well take this this area but if we get an entry here it will be quite valid why we take up asia highs we take up internal range liquidity 
and from there you can move. To the upside. Once you move to the upside, what do we have here? Our premium area where we can look for shorts. Go to EU, our discount area where we can look for longs. Purple and green realigned. So we have now three instructions to work with. Uh, I know that we've already reached into 80% uh, of the range, but you didn't take any internal range. Actually, we did so actually this is already our return to discount. So we got a low, so we have a high, then we got this liquidity sweep actually. Let me show you in like three minutes. Here we go. See? So that's actually now it's a bit differently to short from there because yeah. Hmm. Okay. That changes the situation. Um, this is a news load. The news load already been, has already been taken out. So my actually wait. So this will be a bit lower. I still think that this liquidity can be taken. If you just look at it, especially look at it from the one hour time frame. On the one hour, it's the still still the same candle. So I think we can still take that. I think we can still take that. Whether it's gonna happen or not, it doesn't matter. I think I think we can still take that and I will trade accordingly. So I will look for shorts from here. I will look for longs from here. I will look for shorts from here. Um, above previous daily highs, of course. Although if we get above previous daily highs, we get close to, um, this one's still liquidated. Okay, let's just think. Um, if we get above previous daily highs, we get close to previous weekly highs. Um, if we get close to the eyes, I might uh, I rather wait three days on a rush. I rather wait for previous weekly highs to be taken out, then give me a trade from there to the downside. Then for you, we're bearish, but liquidity goes on to the other side, but we're still bearish. What does that mean? I'm looking for short trades as well, which then again does line up with EU. And with the XY. And those short trades should come from this area. We got Asia has above. Asia highs. We got Asia lows. And we got to work with that. We got some liquidity building up here. A break there, this break there. Wow, well, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely do this. So, now we have 50 million supply zone. And unlike EU, where we can look for buys, I won't be looking for buys on GU and only for sales from this area. And above that liquidity point, and uh, yeah, that's it for me. So EU, we're looking at sells, buys, sells, so sells, sells, buys. Those are my high probability areas. GU, so oh, that makes it, this makes it more high probability as well as that GU is bearish. And the DXY is going to get up here anyway, so that makes this area a little bit more valid, although. DXY so had the same thingy where on the 15 and lower already took that into the range liquidity. Um, can't ignore this. You just can't keep that in mind. Same one. You there. Although it's not looking that clean. Well, also, it could be a case. Let's see. Five minute, One minute. I won't use it because it's one minute, but I think, oh no, nothing up there. Thought maybe there would be something. Nothing there. So this is what I'm looking at. This is my pre-market analysis. We have option one. We have option two. 
we have option three. And that's for GU. We've just got two options really. Um, if we get above here, I'll be looking shorts from there, shorts from here. And of course, yeah, of course, the ones from there. So that's our pre-market analysis. Hope it made sense. Wish you guys good luck last day. Make it count. And I'll catch you guys in the market.